So in this video, I'm going to talk about how electrolytes will affect uh, the colligative properties which we covered in lecture. Now remember, when in lecture, when I emphasized that the colligative properties will, will uh, change depending on the number of particles in solution. Okay, now when we think about this idea, we need to keep in mind that electrolytes will completely dissociate in when you dissolve the uh, solute and it will result in more than the original concentration, right? So, so if you have NaCl and dissolve NaCl in water, right, you have N, the sodium and chloride ion. If you dissolve that in some water, you end up coming to N a plus, right, and C L minus, okay? So for every one particle of NaCl, you end up getting two particles in solution, right? One Na plus and one C L minus. So we can account for this phenomenon with the Van Hoff factor. So as I have written up here, it's just the actual number of particles in solution versus the number of formula units initially dissolved. Okay, so by, by that I mean for all non-electrolytes, I will always equal one. Okay, so like sucrose, for instance, is a non-electrolyte. It will not dissociate into water, it, excuse me, dissociate when it's in water, so the actual number of particles equals the number of particles you put in, okay? I already talked about NaCl, right? NaCl would have a Van Hoff factor of two, okay? So for every one mole of NaCl that I put into solution, I'll get two moles of particles once in solution, right? Na plus and Cl minus. And you can even continue this with strong electrolytes like CaCl2, right? Calcium chloride. The Van Hoff factor in this case would be 3 because it's going to dissociate into 1 Ca2 plus cation, right? A calcium cation, and 2 chloride anions. Okay, so you'll end up with 3 particles in the solution when you started with 1 um, mole of CaCl2, for instance. Now, I do want to point out that all of these are all strong electrolytes, and you can be you can be fairly certain that the Van Hoff factor is going to be one of these integers, uh, or at least close to the integer, for strong electrolytes. Now how does this apply to colligative properties? Well, a 0 0.1 molal solution of NaCl, 0 0.1 molal solution of NaCl, right, with a Van Hoff factor of 2, it turns out that the freezing point depression, for instance, the freezing point depression will be twice that of a non-electrolyte solution, right? So the freezing point will be um, two times greater than that of a non-electrolyte, right? And I'm kind of squeezing into the edge there. Therefore, all of the colligative property equations that we talked about in class um, all have to be modified in order to compensate for the Van Hoff factor. Okay, so the freezing point depression, for instance, will end up being the delta T sub F is equal to I times the uh, freezing point constant, okay, times molality. And then similarly with the boiling point elevation, right, we have the boiling point has, you have to account for the number of particles in solution with your I, and then you have your boiling point constant elevation as well, um, uh, multiplied times the molality. And then the last one is just the osm osmotic pressure is also going to be affected. You just have the um, Van Hoff factor multiplied times the molarity, the gas constant, and the temperature. So as I mentioned, the Van Hoff factor is going to increase the uh, colligative property by a factor of two. Say if you have uh, two parts in solution for every one part that you initially started with, right? Uh, 
So it turns out the experimental is not quite as straightforward. The Van Hoff factor is usually smaller than the predicted Van Hoff factor due to the formation of ion pairs. Now this is just in solution when you have ions, you know, a positive and negative charge that will come together because they do have that formal charge. They form these loose ion pairs. So for every um, ion pair that you would expect that would occur, it will decrease the formal Van Hoff factor. So here's a table from your book that has calculated versus measured versus measured Van Hoff factors in a 0 0.05 molar electrolyte solutions. Now here at the top, you see that they have sucrose, but as you can see by the footnote here, it's just non-electrolyte and it's just listed for comparison. So sucrose behaves exactly like we would expect it to. Now the difference is when you get into electrolytes that will dissociate in solution, right, which are all of these guys, you have these calculated um, Van Hoff factors that are just whole integers. But then when you actually go to um, see what the, say for instance, what the osmotic pressure that is the, the osmotic pressure that is observed, we can calculate what the measured Van Hoff factor is. And remember the difference between this is just ion pairs. Ion pairs contribute to the measured Van Hoff factor being different than the calculated. And I'm just going to point out a couple here. So you have the um, NaCl, HCl, and then the uh, magnesium sulfate right here that's going to account for or give you two ions in solution for every one that you start with. Okay, um, Magnesium chloride will give you three, but then we only see 2.7, so we have um, quite a few ion pairs. And the same with iron, iron 3 chloride. Okay, so you have you would expect a Van Hoff factor of four, but then what we actually observe through the osmotic pressure that we see, you know, from our solution, a 0 0.5 molar solution, we actually, excuse me, 0 0.05 molar solution, we actually see a measured Van Hoff factor closer to 3.4. Now what's interesting about this is because we, and, and maybe this is pretty straightforward, but I just want to point it out that the likelihood of straying from the calculated Van Hoff factor is greater if we increase the concentration of our solute, right? So here we're comparing sucrose, non-electrolyte, versus NaCl, which is a strong electrolyte. Now notice here, over in the very low concentration, you have 0 0.0001 molality, okay? So you have a pretty small concentration here. The Van Hoff factor for sucrose is 1, which is what we about about what we expect. Now the Van Hoff factor for NaCl turns out is actually really close to the calculated, which would be 2. And as you start to increase in concentration, notice that the observed Van Hoff factor will decrease as you increase the concentration. So it's 0 0.001 molality. We get to, we stray a little bit further from two, going down to 1.94, and then even further once we get down to 0 0.1 molality. Now I want you to think about this, right? Zoom in on a molecular level. If you have a higher concentration of solute particles within that solution, the likelihood of forming ion pairs becomes much greater, right? If there's actually physically more contact between the uh, cations and anions, they're going to have a higher likelihood of forming these ion pairs. So the higher your concentration, the greater the likelihood of forming ion pairs. So the take home with this is just, I wanna show you that it is not enough to just know the concentration or the amount of stuff, right, that you're putting into solution. You need to be thinking about on a molecular level what's actually happening within that solution and how is it going to affect um, the broader uh, properties that we see, right? The, the freezing point, the boiling point, and the osmotic pressure. So I really want you to be thinking about um, zooming in on a molecular level, what is going on in order to have those different uh, particles in solution and how is it going to affect the solution's properties.